Hey everyone, welcome to our channel, Liftoff. We provide SpaceX news and updates and also update you on important developments in the space race. In this episode, we have updates on China and their breakthrough on Mars and ambitious plans for energy production. We also talk about the struggles NASA's InSight mission is facing. Before we move on to the updates, please subscribe to our channel. If you enjoy your time with us, please like us and share. Ingenious Cleaning Methods Dust accumulation on the solar panels of NASA Inside Mars Lander is reducing the power to the spacecraft and could force the mission to end within a year. At a June 21 meeting of NASA's Mars Exploration Program Analysis Group, Bruce Bennard, principal investigator of the InSight mission at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, said dust accumulating on the lander's two solar panels has drastically reduced the amount of power they produce, requiring some instruments to be turned off at least temporarily. The dust accumulation on the solar arrays has been considerable. We have about 80% obstruction of the arrays, he said. The amount of energy available to the lander per Martian day, or Sol, has dropped from nearly 5,000 watts an hour, shortly after its November 2018 landing, to less than 700 watts an hour right now, according to data Bennard presented at a meeting. The decline in energy was expected, and the mission was designed to have enough power for its prime mission, which lasted one Martian year, or 687 days. The continued decline in power, though is becoming an issue as an inside operator, is an extended mission funded through the end of the 2022 to collect additional seismic data. Bennard said that mission had hoped for cleaning events where winds remove some of the dust, allowing the panels to generate more power. Such cleaning events allow the solar-powered Mars Exploration Rover, Spirit, an opportunity to operate for years for longer than expected. Those cleaning events have not taken place for inside, though, and the other attempts to remove the dust, such as shaking the panels, have failed. More recently, the mission tried a novel approach for cleaning the panels, using the lander's robotic arm to scoop up regolith and then release it near the panels. Winds allowed some particles to bounce off the panels in the process of removing dust, a process known as saltation. We had some success with that, he said. The first attempt at saltation increased energy output by 25 to 30 watts an hour, as he said. A second attempt, though, provided only a temporary increase in energy. And a third attempt last weekend offered a little bit of an increase. This has bought us a little bit of headroom that we didn't have before, he said. Energy levels are dropping because of both an increased dust accumulation and as well as Mars nearing aphelion, or the furthest point in its orbit from the Sun. Mars will reach aphelion in about two months, after which sunlight and thus power levels should increase slightly. Bennard said that the mission is closely monitoring power levels to determine what system may need to be turned off as aphelion approaches. It's going to be extremely challenging to operate through that especially with the instruments, he said. Some sensors, such as for collecting weather and magnetic field data, have already been turned off or used only sporadically. We hope to get some of these instruments up to at least do periodic measurements after aphelion, he said. High hopes in China China plans to use new super-heavy lift rocket currently under development to construct a massive space-based solar power station in geostationary orbit. Numerous launches of the upcoming Long March 9 rocket would be used to construct space-based solar-powered facilities 35,786 kilometers above the Earth, according to Long Li Hao, chief designer of Chinese Long March rocket series, speaking during presentation Thursday in Hong Kong. The project would aim to establish a large collection area receiving solar energy near constantly, without the atmosphere of seasonal changes affecting energy level. Converted energy would be then transmitted to Earth via microwaves or laser. The project would provide large-scale renewable energy and help tackle energy resources scarcity. The project, according to Long, 
would begin with a small-scale electricity generation test in 2022, leading to a megawatt-level power generation facility around 2030. Commercial gigawatt-level power generation would be realized by 2050. This would require more than 100 Long March 9 launches and around 10,000 tons of infrastructure assembled in orbit. The complex project calls for a solar energy collection system with an area on the order of square kilometers and a large microwave power transmission subsystem. Kui Farin, another senior space figure and chief designer of Shenzhou spacecraft, also spoke of the complex mega project and its potential value day earlier. Both Long and Kui, however, note major challenges including economic feasibilities and manufacturing costs, as well as the efficiency and safety of energy transmission. Space-based solar power projects have previously been considered by countries including the United States and Japan. China listed space-based solar power as a key research program in 2008, according to Xinhua. First sound on Mars from China China's first Mars rover has captured its first sound of the Red Planet and beamed back stunning views of a drive on the dusty world. A new video, released by Chinese stays run CCTV news channel today, shows the first sounds recorded by the Mars rover Zhu Rong as it drove off its Tianwen-1 lander and onto the Martian surface on May 22nd. It also includes stunning video of Zhu Rong driving on Mars captured by stitching together images from small cameras deployed on the rover. The sounds were made when the pinion of the Mars rover rotates on the rack or say the clashing sounds between metals. Jia Yang, Tainwen One System Deputy Chief Designer, said in the video according to a CCTV translation. The purpose we installed the recording device is to capture the sounds of winds on Mars during its windy weather. We want to hear how the wind sounds like on a planet other than the Earth. China's Zhurong rover is the centerpiece of the country's Tianwen-1 mission, which delivered an orbiter and the rover to the Red Planet this year. The combined spacecraft launched in July 2020 and arrived in an orbit around the Mars in February. The Mars rover Zhurong landed on the plains of Utopia Planitia on May 14th. It's using six science payloads to study the red planet, including its microphone. With the video image and audio, files we released this time, including those sounds recorded when our Mars rover left the lander, we can conduct in-depth analysis to the environment and condition of Mars, for example, the density of the atmosphere on Mars, said Liu Jizong, deputy commander of China's first Mars exploration program, in the CCTV interview. A second video, also released today, shows a series of stunning views from the Tianwen-1 lander and the Zhurong rover itself as it drives on Mars. They capture views of lander parachute, the moment of parachute separation, and views of the Martian surface from the lander as it approached the ground. When we were designing, we wanted to obtain some visual states of the rover, which could be used as basis for further improvement of the project, said Rao Wei, deputy chief designer of Tianwen-1 probe, according to CCTV. Then we designed several parts, including the process of opening the parachute, releasing the canopy, and descending. Those systems appeared to work as planned, with the Tianwen-1 lander descending as designed and then pinpointing a safe landing spot. Thank you for joining us today. Please like us and hit subscribe button so we can notify you when the next episode is available. Until next time, it's bye for now from all of us at Liftoff.